natural wonderland of plants, animals, and of course, water, wetlands are considered the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. Often disregarded as a waste of land, there is much more to these natural systems than what meets the eye. In this video, we'll be learning what wetlands are, what organisms can be found there, and why they're important to you and me. Let's get exploring. For starters, let's define what exactly a wetland is. Well, surprisingly enough, the defining characteristic of a wetland is wetness. Okay, so maybe it wasn't that surprising. I mean, the name does start with wet. Anyway, water-saturated wetland soils are home to some very unique bacteria and plants, and are known as hydric soils. The presence of these hydric soils in vegetation is what officially defines a wetland, and makes them different than similar ecosystems, like ponds or rivers. Wetlands form on every continent on the Earth, under a huge range of different climactic and geographic conditions, which means that they can have very different organisms depending on where they are located. In this video, we'll be focusing on the wetlands of the southeastern U.S., which are typically permanently wet areas with woody vegetation. Wetlands like these that contain woody vegetation, such as trees and bushes, are known as swamps. So what kinds of organisms live here? Well, at the base of the wetland food chain is the previously mentioned hydric vegetation, which provides food for numerous species of small aquatic animals. Some of these primary consumers are visible to the naked eye, but many are not. Oftentimes, these little critters are actually the larval stage of fish or amphibians, which were deposited as eggs into the wetland where they can hide from predators among the substrate or dense vegetation. Many species of rare fish and amphibians depend on wetlands as a place to raise their young. This ability of wetlands to act as a nursery for small amphibians and fish is one of the key factors that plays into their importance in a natural system. Stepping up a level from those little guys are a plethora of secondary consumers, from larger fish and amphibians to familiar mammals like the raccoon. In the aquatic world, many secondary consumers have adaptations allowing them to gulp air rather than trying to extract all of it out of the oxygen-poor water, a feature which is seen in fish such as gar and amphibians such as the amphiuma. Also, as you may have guessed, the shallow water and thick vegetation makes these areas a paradise for snakes, many of which have very unique aquatic adaptations. Near the top of the food chain in wetland ecosystems are a huge variety of bird species. Wading birds such as herons and egrets are perfectly built for life in these habitats. Long legs keep their bodies out of the water. Incredible eyesight helps them spot prey, and spear-like beaks help many species skewer their next meal. Some waders, like the wood stork, have evolved different feeding strategies. Their beak is curved and highly sensitive, allowing them to sift through the substrate and pick out tasty crustaceans and small fish. Other birds, such as osprey, don't wade at all. Spotting prey from a distance, osprey dive into the water and snatch up large fish using their powerful talons. Meals are usually transported to a safe location in a tree to be eaten in peace. However amazing they are, predatory birds aren't the rulers of these wetlands. That title belongs to the largest freshwater reptile in the eastern U.S., the American alligator. These prehistoric beasts can reach weights of over 2,000 pounds and are the undisputed apex predators of the wetland. As top-level consumers, alligators keep populations of everything from fish to white-tailed deer in check. And that's not all. In the dry season, alligators will construct small ponds to keep them wet and cool. These ponds are an important water source for other organisms that depend on a moist environment for survival, which is pretty much everything in the wetland, and allows animals to live year-round in that location, 
rather than try and migrate to a wetter area. We call organisms like alligators that modify their physical environment in a substantial way ecosystem engine. Other examples of these types of organisms that you may be more familiar with are things like beavers, which build a dam and create a pond ecosystem. Not only are wetlands full of incredible wildlife, they also provide numerous ecosystem services to people like you and me. Water is slowed down and trapped in wetlands during heavy precipitation events, reducing the likelihood of flooding that could cause serious damage to people and property. This water is also filtered through wetland vegetation and soil bacteria, which removes toxins, including heavy metals, which can be harmful to wildlife and to humans. These same plants and bacteria also take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, consuming the carbon and producing large quantities of oxygen in a manner very similar to forests. In fact, new research suggests that some wetlands might be better at capturing CO2 than forests. How's that for a waste of space? Thanks so much for joining me on today's adventure into the wetlands of the southeastern U.S. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about what makes these natural systems so special. Now the biggest takeaways from today's video are that wetlands are defined by hydric soil and vegetation and that not only are they the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet, they also provide numerous services to humans, such as filtering our water and preventing flooding. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Also, if you're interested in seeing more video clips and photos from my adventures, be sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram pages at The Wild Report. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report, signing out.